The old joke used to be that men would buy Playboy magazine for the articles. And the new joke might become, no, I don't take Cialis for erectile dysfunction, I take it to live longer. But in truth, Playboy magazine really did have groundbreaking articles written by some of the world's best authors. And in all honesty, Cialis really does seem to have a ton of positive effects for health span and lifespan. In a recent thread on X, Brian Johnson explored that very idea because it turns out that's one of the pills in his regimen. What did he have to say about Cialis lifespan and his titanic erections? We're getting into all of it right now. Welcome to Longevity Science News, I'm Emmett Short, and this is the episode where we're looking at the benefits of good circulation, the chemistry of vasodilation, and we're gonna explore how blood flow could provide anti-aging possibilities. But more importantly, I'll be working very hard to not make a whole bunch of immature jokes while talking about Cialis and a guy whose name is literally Johnson. Will I succeed? Let's find out. Now, if you love diving deep into longevity science like this, and maybe even appreciate the occasional immature joke, consider supporting us on Patreon. Members get exclusive content and help us post more often and help us bring in special guests. Now, back to the science. Now, kicking things off, longevity expert and human guinea pig, Ryan Johnson, grabbed our attention when he posted the following. I take 2.5 milligrams of Cialis daily, not for erections, but for the longevity. Here's what the science says about Cialis and lifespan extension and why it's not the reason behind my three hour long Titanic nighttime erections. Let's skip over the Titanicness of Mr. Johnson's Johnson and focus on the life extensionness components. We all know what Cialis does, but how does it work? Now, Cialis increases blood flow famously to a certain, shall we say, vessel. But the obvious question is, how could a rising Cialis tide only lift the Titanic? And the answer is, it doesn't. Cialis increases blood flow, period. The effect is systemic. It just so happens that people focus on one particular area because it stands out. Cialis, which is the brand name for Tadalafil, is a product, and products need to be marketed in the most lucrative way possible. Portraying Tadalafil as a dick pill is simply the most effective marketing strategy, okay? If, you know, if you say, oh, it's kind of good for the heart, you know, it may help your brain a little, you know, your sales will be mid. If you say, this shit makes your dick rock hard, sales explode. I'm sorry I had to subject you to that crass language. Anyway, the long and the short of it is, marketing teams are not trying to be hard on themselves. Positioning Cialis as a longevity pill would be a pretty stiff challenge. Although, not to be cocky, I am in marketing and I think I could nail it. Penis. Sorry, that just slipped out. Anyway, to talk about the actual chemical mechanisms that make Tadalafil work, we'd have to cover endothelial cells, L-arginine, calcium, PLC, IP3, IP3 receptors, nitric oxide, nitric oxide receptors, GTP, CGMP, PKG, guanili, <clears throat> guanilil, guanilil, silk, guanilil, cyclase, and smooth muscle tissue. But for the purposes of this video, you don't need to know how the sausage is made. Okay, but I do need to talk about three of those things, nitric oxide, CGMP, and smooth muscle. Maybe this will help. To understand how nitric oxide causes smooth muscle within blood vessels to relax, you first have to understand the very basic anatomy of blood vessels. Okay, basic anatomy? <laughs> there are about three words that I understand in this diagram, so forget that. Okay. So the super basic version goes like this. Anytime the human body senses that it needs more blood flow, it produces nitric oxide. Those tiny gas molecules diffuse out of the blood vessel cells and into the nearby smooth muscle cells. Nitric oxide receptors then signal an enzyme called guanylyl cyclase to convert a nucleotide called GTP into CGMP. And again, this is just a super simple non-expert explanation, CGMP, sends a message to the smooth muscles to relax. Now, because our blood vessels are lined with smooth muscles, when those muscles relax, 
it allows the vessels to open wider and more blood flow can circulate through it. So here's a diagram of what the whole complicated biochemical pathway looks like. No one makes a simple, easy to understand diagram because apparently everything needs to be hard all the time. Here's the other problem. You don't always need increased blood flow. So what happens to the body to reverse this whole process and cause the blood vessels to restrict again? That's the job for PDE5, which wasn't even on any of our lists or diagrams so far. You can see why this is draining to explain. PDE5 is short for phosphodiesterase 5. Phosphodiesterase. PDE5 is an enzyme that breaks down CGMP. So remember, CGMP is the nucleotide that tells smooth muscles to relax. So as PDE5 kills off those messengers, fewer and fewer messages are sent. So as fewer and fewer relaxed messages are sent, the blood vessels will gradually tighten up again. And that's typical blood flow over the course of just a few seconds, really. So just imagine the scenario. You're sitting at the computer, liking this video and leaving a comment. Then as soon as you're done sharing this video with a friend, the building catches fire and you run outside and you're safe and you stop running and eventually your system calms back down. This image shows what happens to your blood vessels in that short period of time. Your blood vessels were baseline, they opened up real wide, they constricted, and then they regulated back to baseline. Now, what I'm going to say next is going to blow your mind. That was a whole bunch of science, and we haven't even started talking about Cialis. So, Cialis is a PDE5 inhibitor. Now, PDE5 isn't completely disabled, but it is restricted from breaking down CGMP. So, if CGMP molecules are sending messages to your smooth muscles to relax, 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 and PDE5 isn't able to kill those messengers as fast as normal, the relax message just keeps getting sent. The result, your blood vessels generally stay relaxed and open, granting more blood flow for a longer period of time. PDE5 is still present. It's still working. It just isn't as effective as normal. Eventually, the Cialis wears off, PDE5 enzymes regain full function, and CGMP levels are reduced as normal. Now, you might be wondering, what about all the other pharmaceutical vasodilators? Don't they also open up your veins and arteries? What makes Tadalafil so special? Especially in comparison to other PDE5 inhibitors like Sildenafil, aka Viagra, and Vardenafil, aka Levitra. It's easy to assume Hey, if they all function the same way, they're probably all equally effective. Well, Tadalafil has a half-life of around 17 hours, which means you get up to 36 hours of gentle vasodilation. The other two options are more responsive, more quickly, in case you have, you know, limited time and need to rise to the occasion. But their effects on the smooth muscle fade after six to eight hours. For longevity purposes, consistency is usually a better bet than ping-ponging between extremes multiple times a day. Then there are these four other classes of vasodilators. Nitrates, calcium channel blockers, alpha adrenergic blockers, and beta blockers. All of these medications will open up your veins and support more blood flow, but any extreme changes have the potential for a cascade of other physiological responses. It's the slow build, long lasting function of Tadalafil that seems to have the gentle boost that we want for longevity and for longevity. Now, Brian Johnson's thread on X starts off noting a study linking Cialis to longer survival. That study was a retrospective assessment of 200,000 plus medical records scanning 407 different medications for correlations with lifespan. And both Cialis and Viagra were at the top of the list showing patients with longer lives. Now, correlation isn't proof, but it's pretty rare to see heart healthy, metabolic, and neuroprotective signals all in one pill, which is very cool. It's just way harder to explain than simply saying, boy, yo, 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 yo. <laughs> so here's where Brian's thread takes a detour. You might even call it a Johnson curve. In this post, Brian downplays the ED aspect so that he could entice readers to keep focusing on the benefits of blood flow. He highlights that when it comes to ED, Cialis provides restoration, not enhancement, and even then, the results are modest, so guys who don't have any issue down there are not really going to notice any 
changes. Bottom line, Cialis for ED is, you know, nothing special. And Brian only takes half of the five milligram dose that was used in the study he referenced. So why might you consider taking Cialis? Well, you already know the answer, and that's why I did the first half of the video in the first half of this video. Brian basically spends the rest of the thread highlighting studies that are very interesting, but essentially they're all tied to the concept of mild, steady vasodilation to boost systemic blood flow. So here's a quote from the next post in the thread. Cialis's effect on blood vessels might benefit many organs. It boosts nitric oxide, relaxing arteries, enabling better circulation, organ blood flow, and a bit lower blood pressure, basically helping to keep your blood vessels and heart healthier, improve your fitness, and prevent age-related disease and preventing premature death. Yeah. So the theme is supercharged circulation. Your heart works less to pump blood, your muscles recover faster, and even your brain gets a richer oxygen supply. Longer workouts, faster recovery, the results even ripple through to metabolism and inflammation. Brian's third post noted a study showing daily Cialis in patients with type 2 diabetes resulting in better insulin sensitivity. And another study showed that rabbits on a high-fat diet that got their daily Tadalafil saw their visceral fat, the toxic belly blubber, shrink. Plus, markers of brown adipose tissue, that's basically your internal calorie furnace, roared to life in these rabbits. Essentially, the drug nudged fat cells from storage mode into burn mode. Again, these results dovetail perfectly with the improved circulation that we saw earlier. Better blood flow means tissues respond more effectively to insulin and mobilize fat for fuel. It's almost like our blood is good for us. Brian's next two posts, Cialis reduced chronic inflammation, a major driver of aging, and Cialis can boost your brain. And since arousal begins in the brain, that's a double wham, bammy, thank you, mammy. It's just hard to think of a reason why mild, sustained, increased blood flow would have a negative effect on any mammal. In fact, there could be even more benefits than we know of from taking Cialis. Here's Andrew Huberman talking about using Cialis to fight male pattern baldness. Higher doses of Tadalafil, sometimes also referred to as the by its brand name, which is Cialis, are used to treat erectile dysfunction, but at the dosages that are used to increase blood flow to the prostate, and that now a number of doctors are using to increase blood flow, not just to the prostate, but to all regions of the body, including the scalp, such as 2.5 to 5 milligrams to Dalafil. So this is something that I think deserves attention because it falls under the umbrella of increasing blood flow to the hair stem cell niche in order to maintain hair. It is not something that most doctors are going to be familiar with as the way to reverse hair loss because it won't do that. But the use of low-dose tadalafil to slow rates of hair loss is very much in a logical mechanistic sense exactly the same as the logic of using minoxidil to slow rates of hair loss. It's all about increasing blood flow to support the stem cell niche below the hair follicle. Even Brian's biggest warning with Cialis is an obvious one. It's serious, but it's obvious. Never mix Cialis or any ED pill with nitrate heart meds. Nitroglycerin, like nitrates, like one of the other vasodilators we talked about earlier. Yeah, don't take vasodilators with more vasodilators. Your veins can only get so wide, right? And all your blood would go straight to your feet. Okay, enough about me. What do you think? Is Cialis a big deal because it can do so many great things? Or is the hype overblown because it really only does one thing that happens to have a ton of amazing benefits? Do you prefer the word Cialis or Tadalafil? Are you impressed with Brian's research or do you think he's a blowhard? Did you think this episode would have this many lowbrow dick jokes? If you like them, leave a comment. If you didn't like them, leave a comment. So on a personal level, I'm actually pretty convinced that microdosing Cialis for better blood flow and a long list of life-extending health benefits is a way better marketing campaign than the promise of an erection, especially one that lasts for 36 hours. Yikes. Anyway, Thank you for watching. Consider becoming a member here on YouTube or on Patreon. You'll get perks like early access to videos, exclusive interviews, and a fancy badge in the comments. Plus, you'll be helping us keep the longevity science coming. If you're looking to learn more about living longer, be sure to check out some of our other videos right here. This is Longevity Science News. I'm Emmett Short, and we'll see you next time. Bye.